Hi, I'm Carly of Gnarly Carly Gaming, and today I'm going to be talking about the soon to release for retail Radlands by Roxel Games. I first got to try Radlands this year at PAX Unplugged. The absolutely enchanting human that is Daniel from Roxley's demo team taught me the game and played it through with me, completely handing me my ass, but that's okay because I don't need to win a game in order to enjoy it, especially on the first play. And even being absolutely decimated, I found it really, really joyful. So today I'm going to share a little bit about the game, the differences between the retail edition and some of the deluxe editions that they've had, as well as whether or not I think it's worth snagging when it drops. In Radlands, exactly two players face off head-to-head, -head, both leading a rival tribe and trying to utilize precious water resources to protect their last three remaining camps and obliterating their opponents. This small box right here is our retail edition, and in it you find a rulebook, a bunch of water tokens, and really two primary decks. One will be a bunch of camps. These really shape the game. These will be your three starting camps that you'll draft, and all of them have special abilities and actions that you can use throughout the game, and so what you pick really determines the flow for your rest of your game. The other deck is a lot of other cards that you'll kind of play ahead of your camp, which are as people, or as actions in order to get more resources, or to trigger effects that will help you or harm your opponent. The art is beautiful, the back of them also serves as kind of these punk characters, and really, that's all that's in the box. To set up, each player will take their three camps that they drafted from six and lay them in front of them, along with their water silo, raider's card, and there's also a handy reference sheet for symbology that you can keep nearby. In the game, the people you acquire from the shared deck can be played by spending water equal to their water cost ahead of your camps to protect them, but also to give you special abilities listed on their cards. In any given lane, cards ahead must be damaged and subsequently defeated before a rival can attack the next. Many people in the game have really powerful abilities on their card, and if you have the water resources, once per turn you can use those abilities as long as they're not damaged. If they're damaged, you can't use it unless you restore their health fully. The exception being your camp abilities, which you can always use. For example, here we have a card that lets me damage my opponent by spending one water. Resources in this game are incredibly scarce. Based on the camps you select at the beginning of the game, you'll pull a certain amount of starting cards. In this setup, for instance, I would pull five. However, every turn, I only get three water resource tokens, and I get to draw one card by default. Otherwise, as you start burning things, you're not getting them back. I'll always have three water, but cards can become a big scarcity in the game. Some things can give you more water or more cards temporarily, but even those you have to spend resources in order to activate. So you really are chipping away at your opponent trying to make the most of what little you have. The most control you have in this game is in that starting camp selection. They all have powers and well combined or well built upon can be really effective. But really, your opponent's going to try to find a way to chip at you and go around whatever abilities you have. And because other than your camps, you're pulling from a shared deck of people and action cards, there can be a lot of luck involved in getting the things you really need. But this game isn't about perfect balance. It's chaotic and brutal warfare and attacking each other. My favorite gameplays of this were the 25 minute ones that ended up snowballing. Someone carried away the win decisively and brutally. And yeah, I find that very thematic and fun, but I know not everyone does. It can be really frustrating if you're trying to combat what someone's doing and you just can't pull the cards you need to get there, especially when you're only pulling one card a turn by default. And so I did have a couple of games where people felt that they had no control and it was just a little too brutal. I find that to be fine to me. If I'm trying to set up an elaborate raid and you're able to snipe me and bomb me and knock me out, well, I, I think that's okay. That's what this game is. It's a head v head. It's not meant to be this long gated thing. And because of scarcity of resources and the fact that you're not building an engine that will give you more resources each turn, no more actions, no more cards, besides really working with what you have. A really long form game, a 45 minute game or so, which I have had on occasion where things were really close, 
I found actually to be a worse game than the ones that were decisive and brutal. It's definitely a specific type of play, but if you really like those tactical things that can be a really short, chaotic burst of fun, then this is a game for you. If that's not a game for you and you want to slowly build an engine and see it come to life and have multiple avenues for things and ways to work through them, then this perhaps might not be your favorite game. And I think that's who the game best serves. If you like this very accessible head-to-head -head battle that's quick and fun and playful with room to grow, mind you. The variability that the huge stack of camp cards gives you is pretty immense and it is jam-packed full of beautiful art and it is engaging throughout. I, I think then this is the game for you. I played this game a good dozen times now and I really enjoy it. I think the utilization of limited resources and chipping away at your opponent is really delightful. Like I said, art is beautiful and I really don't mind that in a head-to-head -head intense battle that if I fight hard, sometimes I still fall. So if you're like me and you love that brutal two-player warfare dynamic, then this is a great game for you and I'd highly encourage snagging the retail edition. Now, I have the other editions here, and the reason for that is mostly because of the fear of missing out that I see in so many game spaces. It's very reasonable that when you're looking at a new game release, and it's something that's been crowdfunded and has these big fancy editions that already exist for it, you kind of have to wonder if the retail itself is worth it, or if you're better suited trying to obtain one of the limited copies, whether from the publisher or secondhand, which can often get really expensive. I just wanted to speak for a moment to the different editions so you can understand those differences and really make a decision. I think for most people, the retail edition is at the perfect price point. It's the perfect box. It does everything you need to do. But for some, perhaps, these two may be a better fit. This right here is the deluxe one. And really what you're getting is this magnetized box. It's a nicer box, as well as really hefty, solid water tokens in the center. And the cards themselves are the same art, same cards. However, they're actually made of a more durable plastic material. And so they will stand the test of time, certainly better than what you'll get in the retail edition. And this little box actually sits inside this box. So the super deluxe edition, you're not actually getting anything different from this one. However, it's a storage box, a big, beautiful storage box at that. I mean, look at that inside cover art. That's gorgeous. But primarily what it gets you are these playmats. And I mean, they are really, really pretty. So what you're getting with these deluxe editions are pretty much pure component upgrades. It is a nicer, more durable game. And then the biggest benefit you get is with the super deluxe playmats is just the ease of seeing actions as they play out in the game. All actions in the game, such as the Raider's card, have a trigger point for when they deploy. On the card next to a little bomb symbol, it'll have a number, which is telling you which row to put the card in. Every subsequent turn, it'll advance forward until it would otherwise go past your board onto the other opponent's board, in which case it triggers. Some things have a zero trigger point, which means they just trigger immediately. That's how the game handles actions. All of these things are very easy to do with the base game. You can just slide them up. You'll already have your rows lined up. However, the deluxe edition really does help make that visual simple. You can see very easily where everything should go. All camps, all people, everything has a place, including even your water tokens and ones that you've discarded or used for other things. Everything is very clean and clear, and that's the biggest benefit besides aesthetics that you're going to see with an upgrade. But is it necessary? I don't really think so. I think if I was going to buy one of these today, I would definitely just stick with the retail edition for what you get from the box. It's a perfect size for the game. You're not wasting space on your shelf. It can be thrown in a bag easily if I want to go hang out with a friend and maybe whip it out as something we play after hanging out. It is a two player game after all. And really, I just don't know if the component upgrades are worth that price unless it's something that's going to be hitting the table consistently or whether you're someone for whom that playmat organization is really exceedingly helpful. And even then, I don't know if I'd do it. I'd probably stick with the retail edition and then hop on Roxley's website and get the playmats for $25 extra. You won't have this big, beautiful box. Eventually, you probably won't be able to obtain this big, beautiful box. But even if you're missing out on that little detail of it, you'll be able to get that later, no problem. 
So that's my assessment of Radlands. I think it's a really lovely, compact two-player game if you can get down with some thematic brutality. And I definitely think the retail edition is worth snagging in particular once it comes out on January 18th. Thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions about the game in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you for the next one.